already got a keyboard thing going on now. <laughs> Hello, friends. Uh, this is a special episode. I'm here with Dale on SB Womble, and his sweet wife, Katrina, is just off screen. And um, we're going to talk about clearing into French Polynesia. Yeah. So, Dale and Katrina and their crew cleared in to the Marquesas. And I cleared in to Rangiroa and the Tuamotus, so we're going to talk about everything that goes into clearing in and clearing out of French Polynesia and our different experiences. Now, Womble, uh, tell us what Womble is, what type of boat, size, and all that sure. stuff. Sure, yeah. We're, um, Womble is a Seawind 1600, and we are basically a 52-foot cat with about a sort of 27-foot beam. And, um, yeah, that's about it, really. And you had a crew. How many were on board when you guys... When we went um, into French Polynesia, we had a total of five crew. So okay. we had a couple of friends, a couple, young couple we met in the Bahamas, mm -hmm. who were really cool. Jack and Etta, by the way, friends for life. And then Robin, who's an age-old buddy of mine from back in the day. And so, um, yeah, five people. Okay. And then I cleared in, my boat is a 30-foot or 9-meter sloop. And I cleared in as a solo sailor in the two Motus. Um, so most of you are going to clear in to the Marquesas. That's that's the most common place. It's kind of rare where I cleared in. So let's start out by talking about your experience. Cool. And um, you guys used Tahiti crew, right? Yeah, there's um, there's an agent. I suppose the way we looked at it is we when we first came into Panama because of the canal and everything else, I'd never really thought about using agents before. But through the Panama Canal you tend to because there's obviously you have to have things done and then um, as you leave from Panama and you go to the Marquesas, again, you've got to have things like fumigation certificates. So there's a lot of paperwork done and it really helped to have an agent. In actual fact, it's a little bit expensive and it is possible to do it yourself. The same applies to clearing into French Polynesia. Um, you could literally get on the web now and I think without the complication of COVID, which is another thing that's a big factor because it's mm -hmm. constantly a moving feast. So it does help to be able to talk to someone who's actually in French Polynesia that knows the latest regulations that are being applied, etc. And I'm really hoping and praying for everyone concerned watching this that as we come into 23, 24, that that is no longer the case and we can all sail and explore more like we did. But long story short is we used an organization called Tahiti Crew. It's really easy to look up online. Their prices are totally transparent. They're just listed there. And you could choose the level of service that you want. Yeah, and I'll talk about that in a minute. I have screen yeah. grabs of the different packages that we'll talk about. Yeah. Um, one thing I'd like to say right off the bat for anyone that doesn't know about fr French Polynesia, it's it's pretty unique as far as the country to clear into. It's more more challenging to clear into French Polynesia. They have they have things that you have to do you don't have to do elsewhere. One of the biggest things is that you have to have a bond. So if you just arrive to French Polynesia without getting Tahiti crew as an agent, I also use Tahiti crew as an agent, um, you have to pay like $1,800 cash to, or credit card or whatever, to Tahiti, uh, to the, the uh, French Polynesian government to cover, basically to cover a plane ticket to ensure that you're going to leave the country. Which for a solar sailor is cheaper than for a crew of five. Yeah. Because then so you have to cover the whole crew. It's $1,800 per yeah. person. Yeah. So. You can do it that way, or you can you can get a one-way plane ticket out of the country that later you can get refunded. Um, that's another way. So you show them you have a ticket out, and they're doing this so that people don't show up on boats and then just like never leave French Polynesia. So that's the reasoning. It, it is a little strange because I've never seen that anywhere else. Yep. I've never heard of it anywhere else. So it's specific to French Polynesia. So they must have had a problem with people, you know, hanging out. I think <laughs> it, it is so beautiful that people it, do tend to stay yeah. if they can. Yeah. So, so you quite like to make sure you don't. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's a big thing to know. Um, with Tahiti crew, they cover your bond. So they insure your bond. Um, a, with a crew of five or with a single crew, that was, for me, that was the determining factor with going with Tahiti crew. Yep. I think also when you sail in the French Polynesia, the other thing is you've got multiple points of entry, which is actually probably a useful basis of how James and I are discussing this, because you can come in into the Marquesas and into Nukahiva, for example. Um, you can come into Tahiti, to Papeti. You could come yep. into the Tuamotos, which is in between the two. So you need the ability to understand where the local customs office is, mm -hmm. 
any of the forms you have to fill out, etc., how they're filled out, you know what it's like. Mm -hmm. The moment you get one thing in the wrong box at the wrong time, it can create a nightmare for you at the other end. Yeah. And so what was useful about Tahiti Crew for us is they have agents, so subsidiaries. It doesn't change the price you see on the website. I'm going to get this wrong. It's Kevin, not Keith. I know Keith really well, and I keep calling the agent in. <laughs> Look, he got the wrong thing. So let's get this right. Um, but for example, when you come into Nukahiva, we came in, Kevin is a subsidiary, if you like, of Tahiti Yacht Crew, but he has got copies of all the paperwork that you've done. When you fill these documents in and you send them to them, they'll obviously check they're accurate, which is a good thing. If they have any local knowledge, they'll help you with that. So they, they do a lot. They prepare all the docs and everything. I'll come into the extra services later. But um, And then when you show up in Nukahiva, for example, Kevin's right on the dock. You know, it's the main place you go ashore where the dinghy dock is. He's directly opposite in a bright yellow building. He's very difficult to meet, miss. So where? Um, so when you guys arrive to Nukahiva, is that how you pronounce yeah. it? There's a customs dock. Obviously, that's where you guys went to. Is it a quarantine dock or no, is it an anchorage? No, nothing or? as fancy as that. It's a it's a good deep water anchorage, mm -hmm. and um, so you stick yourself out of the bay, and then you dinghy in. Mm -hmm. And then um, Kevin will help you with the paperwork prior to going to the police station. And this okay. is the, the joy of small islands. Every island you go to is going to have a different system for this. So you basically arrive at the dock, you walk all of about 20 meters or 60 feet, depending on what part of the world you're from, and you're at Kevin's place. With Kevin, you sit down, you go through the documentation, and then he literally physically takes you to the police and customs office which is now about a 300 meter walk, mm -hmm. or 900 foot walk. Yeah, and that's the gendarmerie, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Really so. sweet, lovely little sort of, you know, little sort of cottage type place, and you go in there. But by this stage, it's all pretty slick. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everyone's very welcoming, incredibly helpful, and it's not a problem. So my question is, when you arrived at the Anchorage, did you radio in to him? Did you call him on the phone? Did yes. you email him? Yeah. How did you get in touch with him? I've before checked you... the reason I have my iPad up in front of me now is just remembering how we did that. You just call up on channel 72, uh -huh. because you know, classic isn't it? A lot of us, wherever we're arriving from, whether we're arriving from Panama or whether we've come in from the Galapagos, do you have your local SIM card, all that good stuff, mm -hmm. phone connections. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot better in French Polynesia, but you can just call up on the radio. Okay. You know, the guys are, they're on, they're on comms, mm -hmm. sorry, communications during the day, no yeah. problem. So you just call and you're like, oh, we've just arrived, we have, you know, are you speaking directly with this gentleman? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and I'm sure that customs can overhear everything that's happening as well, just because yeah. if you, if you arrive in a country, if you've never arrived to a country by yacht, you show up, when you drop your anchor, you raise a yellow flag, which is called a, a quarantine flag or a Q flag. And that tells the authorities that there's no sickness on board, but you have not cleared into the country yet. Um, and then you can't you can't go ashore unless you've made contact with customs Correct. or your agent. Yeah. So that's why I'm trying to point this out, so that you want to make sure you contact your agent verbally, on the radio, on the phone, however. You don't just go strolling through town until you get everything, because that's a good way to get kicked out of the country right off the bat. So. I think there's one other point to add to that, which is um, never forget that in these countries, for example, they have a cruise come container ship that comes into the Marquesas once every two. I'm gonna have to fact check with the wife. Stand by. Every two to four weeks, wasn't it? The cruise ship. Something like that. Yeah, every couple of weeks. So, if a ship has come in or something is happening, your customs team they're not going to be there to receive you like royalty. Mm -hmm. You know, there's only a couple of people, and they'll be busy. So you can occasionally have the odd delay. It's never more than a day, but you just need to be aware of that when you arrive. It's not, you know, you're not checking in at an airport. It's, it's got to, you're going to have a little patience sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so, so you went to him, he had all your paperwork, and then yeah. you guys went together to the Gendarmerie. Correct, he takes you there himself. Mm -hmm. He knows the drill, he knows the people, it all gets sorted out very, very quickly. Yeah. And you're really free to explore some of the most incredible countryside you've ever yeah. seen in your life. And then we'll get to the clear out process at the end of this conversation, because <clears throat> it's important as well. It's a little challenging as well. Um, for me, like I said, most of you will arrive from Mexico, from Panama, from the west coast of the Americas to the gorgeous islands of the Marquesas. I sailed from Hawaii and I had a pretty gnarly bash getting as much easting as I could because I really wanted to visit the Tuamotus. So I arrived at Rangiroa. Um, I sailed in to Abatoro Pass and anchored in the anchorage nearest to Avatoro village, which is where the Gendarmerie is. Um, put up my Q flag and uh, crashed for the night because <laughs> I came in after they were closed. So the next morning, I went ashore 
and I walked until I found the gendarmerie. I didn't make contact with anyone. I don't speak French. I barely speak English. And got, I found the gendarmerie, and um, young officer, very polite, he had never cleared anyone in. Yeah. So we were like, okay, let's figure it out. So he pulled out some, and he spoke very little English. He, we pulled out some trapper keepers and started going through the files, and we, we sorted it out. So even though I had sent Tahiti crew all of my paperwork and they had like sent it on, it was all like the French government were, were expecting me and I'd done everything they had asked me to do. In this remote field office, um, he didn't have access to any of that. Um, so I just went and filled out all the paperwork by hand. It was no big deal. He was really nice and um, it was chill. Um, and then yeah, that was it. He stamped my passport. Everything was good. Yep. Um, I think, oh, I paid for the solo sailor package. Oh, here, let me bust out. I got some screen grabs of the two different packages, and I'll be interested to see what the name of the package was that you guys had. Oh, look it up. Um, so I had the sailing solo package, <clears throat> premium service one, official clearance, bond letter for one, inter-island clearance, duty-free fuel, and discount card. That was all what was in my package. And I paid at the time uh, that I arrived, which was July of 2022, I paid 300 US dollars. <clears throat> that was my full cost to Tahiti crew. Um, and that, that covered my bond and all their services and everything. And for me, money well spent. Um, do you know what you guys paid for your package or? I do exactly now. <laughs> now that I realize that something, no one told me this was a tech off. Yeah, there you go. Here we go. So we paid um, for exactly that package. Mm -hmm. So the, the bond, um, duty free fuel, etc., and all the paperwork and support. Mm -hmm. So that sailor's package that we took was, and I know the dollar's about one to the euro, so I'm going to say about $400. About $400. So that's yeah. not bad. No. For, if you think about that, for five people. Uh, I thought it was, you know, that's when you. <laughs> when you look at what can happen when it goes wrong, yeah, then it's it's not a big cost, is it? So like on their website, there's like a family package. It says premium service for four. So I'd imagine you did some kind of adapted version of that because you had five. We did, and then I think um, there's a lot of things, and you can see it. It's very transparent on the website. Which, to be honest, you know they offer things like concierge services and things. They'll book your flights. And you know, this is stuff that just doesn't apply to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do yeah. about a lot of super yacht crewing. They do a a lot of stuff. This is like maybe their most basic services that they offer as a company. But I think what's not written on there, which they do, and they are really, really good at it because they've got a, a lovely young team that supply, that supply, sorry, excuse me, that reply really quickly to emails. Mm -hmm. If you just need to know something, if you need to know a supplier, if you need to have an address, if you know, their, their ability to support you with any local knowledge, they were always straight away straight back at us very helpful mm. i i had the same yep. experience like yep. and that's the thing is before you leave whatever port you're leaving from you send them an email and be like okay we're leaving on this day we expect to be here around this time it's that simple yeah and it, it's i thought it was i mean it's really an exceptional i think you know i've only uh, by the way i say this with a grand experience i've only ever used two agents in my life mm -hmm. one was in panama when we had to really mm -hmm. And the other was Tahiti crew, but they were just exceptional yeah. in service. I mean, if I if I sailed back to French Polynesia, I'd use them tomorrow. I would use them yeah. for sure. Yeah, um, I agree. And I looked this morning trying to look on the French government website to try to find the cost of doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. And all the documentation I found was in French. So I couldn't even figure out what it would cost without Tahiti crew. But I can't imagine the price is that wildly different than yeah. what I paid. Um, so, and again, in the description of this video, I'll put links to kind of to Tahiti crew. I'll put it to the, the um, port info for, that's all in French, but uh, I don't even, I couldn't even find like English translations of it. Um, I'll put all those links in the description. So you can check out the description for full links to all kinds of stuff. I think there's also, James, I think there's one other factor that you can think about in using a service like this, and you will pay, it, pay for it on a user pays basis but if you and it's very likely that by the time you've done a passage of that length mm -hmm. or for those that have come through the canal where the boats be in the water for quite a long time that as you get to sort of the main town if you like Papete in Tahiti that you'll probably want to either get some work done or, or get some parts sent to you and um, what Tahiti Yacht Crew will do is they will help facilitate 
all the tax and paperwork that goes through of getting it out of the airports. Because that gets tricky, because when these parts arrive, we know the drill in getting parts around the world. Did you have anything shipped in through Tahiti Crew? I did. Did you have a good experience? I did. I had a terrible experience. There you go, black and white. <laughs> it's terrible. Like, I ended up paying 100% duty on stuff I had shipped did in. Did you? Yes. So, the one thing I'll say about that is if you have something shipped in to Tahiti Crew, make sure it's just boat parts and make sure that the value is listed as under $250. That's all I'll say about that whole Okay, story. and now, I had a and now I'm going to reinforce James's point here because we were lucky that we met a local cuppy. This is going to get very confusing. There's Tahiti Crew, who we've been talking about all up to now, and there's Tahiti Sail. Totally different organization. Oh, yeah. Not confusing at all. Not confusing at all. Lovely couple, David and Nikki, um, and they just, you know, local sailors run a brokerage and yacht service and everything else. But just, we, we met them through contacts we knew. But they were the ones that advised us to be very, very careful mm -hmm. about how everything was labeled, yep. how values were taken yep. off. So we pretty much managed to get everything that was sent to us that was like a, a warranty item or it was given a thing, so we took the values off. Yep. But we only did that because we were instructed and to. And I was I had no knowledge to this. Yep. I just got hosed real bad. Um, the other thing I'll say right now is they're, they advertise this duty-free fuel card. I've never met anyone that successfully used the duty-free fuel. You guys didn't, right? That, I couldn't find anyone that would support that would give me duty free fuel. That fuel card is about as much use as mud flaps on a tortoise. Yeah, um, it, it is not reality. So just don't think you're gonna get. I've literally, I, I probably talked to seven sailors who had the same experience. So that's not a reality. I think you know, there's one huge value of having that duty free fuel card. Is every fuel station you go to, you can have a, lo a great long conversation. <laughs> With whoever's behind the counter <laughs> and make a new friend. Yeah. But you will not have duty free feel by it, the end of that conversation. It will not ever materialize. So, that to be said. Um, but, as I said before, the main thing I learned from there and I guess here as well is just do your very best to never have anything shipped to you. If you can buy it, whatever part it is locally, just do that. You're going to save yourself so much heartache. Yep. Sometimes you can't do that. You have to have it shipped in, and that's another thing. So that's just part of cruising. But <clears throat> my advice is, if it's something you can buy in the country you're in, save yourself the heartache and just do that. Um, if we're staying within the realms of French Polynesia, um, if you actually look up, and there's some good information on it as to who the local suppliers are, either for engine, rigging parts, etc., there are quite a few in Tahiti. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you just do a little bit of, of research, you can get some local parts yeah, we found. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, uh, um, that's the other thing I guess I should say. So like when I cleared into Rangiroa, since it was just a, a remote Gendarmerie office, I had to finish my clear in, in Papiete at Papiete Marina. And it was so minimal, I didn't know I finished my clear in. So like I just had booked a stay to stay there for a week so I could use the, the cruiser's lounge, had really good internet, nice showers, and so I was like, I'm going to go there for a week, book a berth, and knock out a bunch of computer work. Um, so when I went in, the guy Franco in the office was super sweet, there, everyone over there was cool, yeah. and um, I just filled out the info for the marina, but they didn't... I didn't realize that was actually the final clearing process. Because then the next day I was like, oh, I gotta like, I need to go ask them about, you know, how do I finish my clearing? I thought I was gonna have to go to the airport and go to customs. Yeah. So I started looking into it. So I went into the marina office. I was like, oh, what do I do to finish my clearing? Do I need to go to the airport? And they're like, what are you talking about? I was like, oh, well, I cleared in. They're like, oh, you did all that. <laughs> yeah. When you, I was like, oh, okay. It was literally that chill. Like, and those, Franco was, do you guys, did you guys interact with Franco that, He's only, like the, only briefly, because we stayed about one night. Oh, uh, okay, we yeah, he was awesome, awesome. Yeah. So, I had a wonderful experience at that marina, but if you're sailing from Hawaii and you don't like misery, I would say sail to Tahiti, because, and go straight to Papiete Marina, and then you can do all of your clearing just at the marina office. Very easy, very chill. And then the Tahiti crew office for Papiete is at, I can't remember the name of the other Tahiti. marina. Yeah. So yep. that's where it is. And that is that where that cell place is you were talking yes. about? Okay, yep. cool. Mm -hmm. So so that's that's the process of clearing in yep. French Polynesia. And so you're told when you leave the the um, uh, the Windward Islands, which is 
Tahiti and Morea, you're supposed to email a specific email address they give you with all your thing. You're saying, okay, I'm going on to the Leeward Islands, which is uh, uh, Huahini, uh, Raiatea, Taha, and Bora Bora. So you're supposed to email, okay, I'm going on. They give you inter-island clearance. They're like, okay, you can go ahead and go there. And then, in theory, that's supposed to facilitate your clearing out. Uh, in theory. Which was not my experience. Yeah, neither was ours. <laughs> so how many days did it take you guys to clear out? Two. And you cleared out from Bora Bora? Yes. Which is the same place I cleared out. Yeah. Okay. It was, um, yeah, it's 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 pretty straightforward, but you, you do have to go to the local um, police customs. Um, again, super friendly, um, but there's quite a bit of paperwork to be done. And then once they've got all the statements, they need to process it, because they actually have to send a document. A lot of stuff you do has to actually be sent as a, as it can't be done digitally, because it's, it's the way it is. Um, it gets sent by aircraft, or it arrives by air, whichever way it goes. It goes from one small plane to you know Tahiti and back, but, or something. Uh, like an actual paper copy yeah. is shipped to Papiete. It's stamped and it's sent back. And uh, whatever your views on that, they're irrelevant because that's what they yeah, do. It's exactly how it is. And all the paperwork you fill out in Bora Bora is the exact same paperwork you filled out when yeah. you entered. And I asked him, I was like, oh, because I had copies of all the paperwork. I was like, oh, this is the same paper. He's like, no, 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 that was for clearing in. But it's literally the exact we had a stereo, same we had a stereo papers. Stereo conversation. Yeah, so I was like, okay, you just you just deal with it. You fill out all the paperwork. Everyone's nice, and then it took me three days, and it was literally like Friday afternoon before I finally and I was yeah. stressing it because I had like a weather window. I thought I was going to be able to go in, clear out, get stamped, and leave that afternoon. That's what I thought was going to happen. I was shocked that I was like, okay, we're going to mail this to Papiete. And then check back in a couple days. I was like, "What?" <laughs> uh, but I think that's the point, isn't it? Because they, you know, you're trying to hit a weather window, and you're trying to work within probably two to three days' notice because mm -hmm. you're looking at um, you're probably your next leg from there, depending where you're going, could be eight to twelve days. But so you want to get the right window in those waters, and then you're trying to get this paperwork done. And then once you've got the paperwork done, you're going, "Well, hang on, the window's passed now. Can I still stay discreetly?" So the answer is that is you can, as long yeah. as you're not ashore. Yeah. You know, throwing wild parties. It's, they're pretty flexible. They're pretty that. chill, and even and understand which now I'm I'm gonna incriminate you guys, um, because you guys stopped at Muapiti after you cleared out, right? Yeah. And I've known a lot of people that have done this, and it's basically it's like it's like as long as you don't stay like a month, yeah. If it's like a week or something, you know. So Muapiti is is like what is it like twenty nautical miles? Oh, it's about yeah, it's, you're right. It's about thirty nautical miles away from Bora Bora. Uh huh. Just heading, <coughs> excuse me, heading due east. But beautiful. And yeah. it's, but the thing with, you know, these beautiful atolls is they tend to have quite narrow entrances. So if the weather does pick up, you're not leaving. Yeah. And if it's blowing for two weeks, you're there for two weeks. But mm -hmm. no one's going to penalize you for that. Yeah, yeah. They're very chill. As long as you're not breaking any rules or acting a fool, yeah. then it's, it's very chill. I think, actually, I think that's a really valid point you bring up, is that there was nowhere in the whole of the French Polynesia area where people weren't um, sympathetic to the fact that you were sailors, that, you know, the weather windows, or... In actual fact, we've been talking about everything that goes well. We um, we had an incident, happens to a lot of people, and we, we were there, we got our ticket where I tagged um, a bombie with the bottom of our dagger board, so I wanted them to, rep to repair. And that put us just slightly beyond our departure date. Mm -hmm. And another tick, as opposed to the parts, um, the parts finances, mm -hmm. but for Tahiti um, crew, was, um, they actually really, they helped facilitate just a, you know, it was very simple. We just said, look, here are the parts that are being sent to us. Mm -hmm. We had, we supplied a letter saying, you know, we, these parts have been shipped. They just gave it, and they have to go apply to the French consul. Mm -hmm. And the French consul said, fine, it's legitimate. We can understand you're waiting for a part. Yeah. And um, and then they gave you loads of time. You know, I literally only needed about five days, mm -hmm. but they gave us four weeks. Okay. So and and when you arrive, you have three months. Correct. You guys, as British citizens, you yep. have three months, right? And mm -hmm. as well for American citizens. EU, it might be different. I don't know. But you have three months. Yeah, I think EU, you got a bit more. Six yeah. Maybe. And then you could also apply for a long-stay visa. But if you do that, you have to realize that you're going to be... You might be in French Polynesia during cyclone season. So that's something... That's a reason you don't just stay there as long as you want, because a lot of us, most of us move pretty quickly through the South Pacific because we're all racing the clock against cyclone season. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point, James, because a lot of people, and I think I would have done it um, if 
I thought of it if I had an opportunity in advance, which I didn't do, because obviously when you apply for a long-term visa, you've got to be in a country you can do it from. Yeah. You can't do it from within France yep. or French Polynesia. So, for example, if you're in America or in the UK, you need to go to a French consulate, you need to go through, you know, the bureaucracy, mm -hmm. and, um, and you then get your long stay. Some people did it from Panama, seemed to do it quite successfully. But um, if you have time, my personal view on this is... Um, I would recommend you try and get the long stay because it just takes the pressure off you. Yeah, totally. It's an amazing place to stay, and I think once people get into you know exploring the Marquesas and the Tuamotos and the whole area is, you know, three months is tight. It is. There's um, too much to see in three months for sure. Yeah. If you if your life allows for you to have the time, even if you leave the boat, fly yeah. home, and come back or whatever, and I don't know this. For a fact, but I was told by a number of people at Papiete Marina's prices are 50% during cyclone season. So if you keep your boat there during cyclone season, it's yeah. half as much as it is during the, the peak season. Um, but it's a very small marina, so you want to book ahead if you're going to try to keep your boat there. Yeah, 100%. And, it's, you know, and the other thing, I suppose, if you are talking about cyclone season, and I know it's harder for Americans, but you know, it is useful to know that your boat is insured. Mm -hmm if you are in a cyclone area yeah and most people will put a a premium on it mm -hmm. so for example i think on wommel's insurance if we're hit by a named storm we get 80 percent of hull value so if we stayed around somewhere where there's a named storm we're in the path of it and something totals the boat at least we know we recover 80 percent of the boat's value right but um for a lot of insurance companies they won't even touch it yeah you know, if you're in a cyclone season and you get tagged by a named storm that's it they're not yeah paying. you're just toasted so you do need to check that out if you think about long visas in those areas for those mm -hmm. those climates would be just a thought yeah and just briefly this is this whole video is just about the clear in and clear out process but you guys hauled out in Raiatea or in tahiti in tahiti and papete uh -huh. um good service mm -hmm. you know um amazing how many yards do you stay in where you get the locals coming in the evening and dancing and practicing under all the fishing boats that are being worked on, so and a craft brewery about 100 miles, 100 miles, 100 meters away. Mm -hmm. So it was a great place to work. We got some good work done on the boat, which we wanted to do because mm -hmm. um, I think we just done about a year of sailing by then, so it was good timing. And then we were prepped up for the rest. Yeah, but it was awesome. a good experience. Yeah. So I think that I think that covers yeah. the process in and out. Uh, again, this is just a little video. There's a lot of people getting ready for the season. Maybe you're wondering, you know, you want to hear it firsthand of like up-to-date info. We both went through the same season in yep. 2022. Yes. Um, so as of the viewing or as of the recording of this video, that's to the best of our knowledge <laughs> how things go. Again, it's always good, especially with prices, things change. Like you might find this video three years after it was recorded. So you just mainly you just want to go straight to the websites and look up what the current pricing models are for everything. Um, we're just kind of talking about what we experienced when we were there. So thanks for watching. Hope this helps you guys out and I hope you have a fantastic passage and stay in French Polynesia. It is an amazing place. Oh guys, just Un unbelievable. Go. So make sure you hit down in the comments and tell us how you like French Polynesia after you do it. And uh, let me know if you need any other info, and I'll try to supply it to you. Thanks for watching. Fair winds until next time. If you enjoy the content on this channel and would like to contribute, you can consider joining the Patreon crew. Thanks for watching. Fair winds until next time.